What up, everybody? It's your boy, DL, a.k.a. The Church Guitarist, and I'm here to do a video I couldn't wait to talk to you about what kind of guitar should I get. I get that question all the time. Let's go to my commercial. I'll be back in just a second. Which guitar best suits you? Let's go. <music> of the Church Guitarist Club. Thank you guys for joining. Our life has been spinning out of control, but I'm happy about it. We got a Billboard Award, two years playing in the game, and I thank God for that. We've not only met that 1,000 mark for YouTube subscribers, but it's about 1,300 now. I don't even know how this is happening anymore. I'm completely enamored with everybody who's following, everybody who says they're learning something. I get letters, I get DMs every day on somebody saying, hey, I stumbled on your page. Nobody breaks it down like you, man. I thank you for slowing down and teaching me how to get started. I've been in a rut and my heart goes out to you guys, man. I appreciate every good and bad comment I get. I'm watching them, I'm listening to them, I'm reading them, I'm learning from them. Hopefully I'm growing by them. And so uh, I want to do consistent content for you. But I'm teaching at school, I'm playing on records, I'm getting ready to go back on tour. So if you want to help me make this a more permanent idea, then what you can do is you can always donate. You can donate by Cash App or PayPal or shucks, credit card. There's just so many ways. If you give a dollar, if you give a thousand, I appreciate anything you would do to say, hey man, I would love to see you give more consistent, constant content. And I appreciate it. Um, if you are looking at one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, uh, guitar lessons, tutoring, um, me helping help you build your um, chord vocabulary, this is the deal. From now until January 2021, all new students can lock in for the rest of the year in, and into 2021. Your rate at 99 bucks a month. That's like 25 bucks a lesson for four 45-minute sessions, one a week. And uh, PDF and video, you can lock that 99 rate in now. And then that way you keep it through 2021 because January the 1st, 2021, those rates go to 139 a month. So get in now. I said get in now. Before I go any further, though, if this is your first time that you've witnessed the Church Guitarist Club or our live video, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button and then click the bell notification. That way you'll get all of our content the day it is released. I can't believe it. In just a few hours, I'm going away to be filmed for a video. I'm telling you, man, I don't know what's happening, but I appreciate everything that's going on in my life. I'm going to be in a music video for the first time. So I'm excited. So in a little while, I need to go and make sure I pack and get my wardrobe together and talk to my stylist. Who would have thought I'd have a stylist? Anyway, the number one question that always comes into my DMs or that always comes uh, by way of streams or comments is, hey, bro, I'm getting ready to buy a guitar. What guitar should I buy? So we're going to deal with that for a few minutes. I'm, I, I, I don't want to be long, but I want to make sure we understand there's, there are so many dynamics as it relates to what guitar you should buy. I want to do maybe five big points. All right. So I'll list them on the screen as well. Five big points 
of what you should be looking for when you go to buy a guitar. So I hope you're tuned in. I hope you're ready to go. Um, you can be eating lunch, uh, sir, ma'am, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Let's do it. Which guitar should I go and buy? So my first point today I think will blow your mind more than any other point. When you're going to go buy a guitar, I don't care how much money that guitar costs. Here's my first point. It must feel good in your hands. You got some guitar players that could play any different style of guitar and make it sound like a million bucks or like butter. They could play PRSs or Fenders or Epiphones or Gretches or, or they can play Customs and they make all those guitars sound incredibly great. Well, when you're a beginner to intermediate or beginning to intermediate guitar player, that doesn't always work. So you got to find out what guitar feels good in your hands. I have guitars from the pawn shop. I have guitars that have been given to me. I got thousand. I have a thousand dollar guitar. It's probably one more like three thousand dollars. And pr I promise you, if it doesn't feel good in your hand, it is not the guitar for you. I don't care whose name is on the headstock. I don't care who signed that guitar. If that guitar does not feel good in your hand, then it's not the guitar for you. If you're used to playing a Fender Stratocaster, then you're going to feel a little strange if you switch to an Ibanez. Ibanez across the board is known for having a flatter radius uh, a smoother neck, a faster neck, uh, but it feels so flat. The frets can be a little bit smaller. And then you would hate the Ibanez guitar when Ibanez makes some incredible instruments. So a lot of times our dislike for certain guitars are not the guitar themselves. It is, it doesn't suit or fit us. So that's the first point. I think every guitarist needs to concretize. You need to make sure you nail that one, that coffin in. What feels good in my hands? I used to play keyboards. Right? I'm a keyboard player. So I have longer fingers and a little bit bigger hands. So I needed jumbo frets. Or I needed bigger frets. So Fender with their baseball C size neck or whatever or C shaped neck feels great to me. I have a few Fender Stratocasters with that big baseball bat type neck. Feels really good. I don't have a problem. As a matter of fact, when I bought my Gretsch, then it took some adjustment. Okay? It took some adjustment because the neck is a little bit smaller, a little bit faster, the radius a little bit flatter. It felt more like an Ibanez, like the G the Geo series. It felt more like an Ibanez. So I had to get used to it. But I'm learning how to adjust in my guitar playing. So that doesn't necessarily bother me like it used to bother me. Okay? So that's the first thing. Does it feel good in your hand? I don't care if the guitar costs $20. I don't care if you found it in the bottom of somebody's basement. I don't care if that guitar costs $5 million and it was signed by Carlos Santana. If it doesn't feel good in your hand, you're going to have a terrible time adjusting. You're not going to be able to pull off what you want to pull off. With this legendary guitar in your hand, you're going to sound like an amateur. Okay, I don't want that to be. Find the guitar that feels good in your hand. Here's the second one that I think is most important, uh, just as important as the first. Not only does it need to feel good in your hands, what kind of music are you playing with this guitar? If you're playing rock and roll, man, you can almost pick up any guitar off the shelf and employ that guitar for rock and roll, even acoustic guitars, okay? But if you're playing jazz, your guitar selection somewhat narrows. If you're playing jazz, you're probably looking for something that looks like this. Epiphones or Gretsch's hollow body guitars that give you warm, rich, thick, dark tones for jazz. Mostly they're going to be used with flat wound strings. They're not strings that you bend and you can get whole note bends out of them. You're talking about 
13, uh, 13s or 12s on these guitars, and they're really for sliding and that type of thing. What kind of music are you playing? If you're playing gospel, shucks, it becomes wide open again. You can play an Epiphone. You can play a Stratocaster. Um, you can play a Tele. Listen, if you're doing R&B, funk, or gospel, or country for that matter, you cannot go wrong with a Telecaster. Telecasters give you that belly chime tone that it rings it cuts it's so crisp and clean at the neck position you get a little bit warm a little bit heavy but when you get into the second and the third position of that selector to the bridge and in between you're talking about chimey tones that kind of break through the atmosphere i love telecasters for that reason, even when you're talking about pairing these single coil pickups with a rosewood neck or an ebony neck or an ebony fretboard or rosewood fretboard or something like that, man, you get these tones that are so sweet. So number one, does it feel good in your hands? Number two, what kind of music are you playing? If you're playing country music, Telecasters all day long they do the job okay also you can get some great tones for overdrive from humbucking systems so if you do a like a lot of heavy stuff then you're looking for like an epiphone or you're looking for a strat or a telly that may have a humbucker at the bridge or Strat that has different configurations. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. The third one, I think is, it is important, but a lot of times it doesn't fare. You can, you can make your guitar look however you want to look, but what does that guitar look like for you? Are you attracted to that guitar? Are you? Because you're going to have to wear it. You and this instrument are going to be one. That's, that's going to be what you're kind of known by. And sometimes you can walk into your favorite guitar shop and see a guitar that you love the look of it. It has an asymmetrical look like the Flying V or, or it looks like old vintage like the Rickenbacker, right? What does this guitar look like? If you play your guitar really, really high, then maybe... Uh, uh, acoustic or a hollow body may not be good. You play it too high, you got all this body and you're almost covering up your face. If you're, if you're playing it too low, then you don't want something that you can't reach, okay? That, that, you, that you have to bend over to play, okay? So what kind of music are you playing? What does this guitar look like? I'm going to be honest. I'm not cool with the sound of this guitar, but I love the look of this guitar. This is a Fender, right? I love the look of this guitar. As a matter of fact, I think they're Starcasters. But I love the look. And I love the headstock, by the way. That's a beautiful guitar. All right? Let me stop here and give you another commercial. If you want to donate so we can do content on a regular basis or consistent, more constant basis, all you got to do is reach out on either Cash App, by credit card, or by PayPal, Whatever you're going to give, we appreciate anything you're going to give. And did I say I have merch? Coffee mugs, t-shirts, soon-to-be wristbands. Um, I'm in the midst of making a hat right now. If you want to know how you can get some merch, just reach out. TheChurchGuitars at gmail.com. All right, and we'll ask all those questions. Let's do number four and five, and then you can go back to running your business this Saturday. We've covered how it feels in your hand. We've covered um, what kind of music are you playing. We've covered how that looks. Now, I'm going to be honest. There's this one guitar I want very badly that I probably won't play out in the open, that I'll probably just have in my house hang it on my wall, and play it for my own private pleasure. That is Prince's Cloud. I fell in love with it at Purple Rain. The look of it blew me away. 
Schechter did an incredible, incredible job with this guitar. And I've never played one yet. I'm going to soon hold one, though. Don't count me out yet. I'm soon to hold one. I'm getting close. What does this guitar look like? Do you like the look of this guitar? That's important. Number four, which I think is about as important as number three, is how heavy is this instrument? I'm going to be honest. When you start moving from the beginner to an intermediate guitar player and you're playing often, the weight of that guitar is going to be important. Because you're going to strap this thing around your neck and you're going to notice when you take it off, you're going to have to take some aspirin or some Tylenol or pain meds or something because you have all this weight that you're holding. And most guitars, when we're playing a gig, we're the only musician in the band that's almost regulated to stand up. You've hardly ever gone to a concert and the guitars were sitting down. Goes for basses too. So you don't want some 15 pound, you know, Goliath around your neck. So while I have a stadium guitar, it feels about 12 or 13 pounds, honestly, but she resonates incredibly. So the more wood, the more dense, the more thick, the more resonance and ring you get out of that guitar. But sometimes I look over at that telly man, and I go, Nah, I think I'm going with the lighter one. I have some Jim Smith custom-made uh, Telecasters that are beautiful to look at, and they're very light. So how heavy do you want that guitar? If Epiphones are known for being a little bit more beefy, a little bit more heavy, not so necessarily hollow and light. So how, how, how often are you going to play this guitar how heavy is this guitar going to be? If you can deal with a heavy piece of wood that resonates well and it also looks beautiful, go for it. If you need something a little bit lighter, you may want to start looking into some custom guitars so you can get the feel that you want out of that guitar as well. All right? Here's the last point. Point number five. If you have any questions that you want to give me, make sure you either put it in the stream today or uh, you email me at the church guitars with two E's at gmail.com. I read every, every comment, every email. I read them all. I appreciate anything you guys have to say. All right. So we talked about number one was if it doesn't feel good in your hand, it's not your guitar. Number two was what kind of music are you playing? Number three, what does that guitar look like? I have a guitar that has a bunch of stickers on it. I sticker bomb the guitar. I love that guitar, but I don't take it everywhere. When I play corporate gigs, I don't take that guitar, okay? So what does the guitar look like? Number four, how heavy is that guitar? Number five, which I think probably belongs up there with one and two, is what do you want to get out of this guitar? If you want mellow, hollow, acoustic tones, you're definitely not looking at, a, at an electric guitar. Unless you're looking for the Fender Acoustasonic, I think that's what they call it, something like that. Uh, because it plays like a hollow body um, acoustic guitar, although you plug it up and it's smaller. Um, but if you're wanting something to break through if you want something that has a lot of meat on it then the configurations of the of those pickups are important there is such a vast variety of how you can get your guitar set up you can get a telecaster um, i think it's called a nashville style where, where it has like two single coils and then a humbucker on the bottom i don't know if that's what that guitar is called or you can get it with two humbuckers, naked bridge, and then a you know single coil in the middle. You can fix your guitar any way you want to fix your guitar. But the problem is, or the question you should be asking yourself is, what do you want to get out of this guitar? Do you want it to be big, beefy, and mean? Or do you want it to be mellow, sweet, and clean? That all talks about 
your pickup. Now, can I give an addendum to this list? Tone is in your hands. Your tone is generated by your hands. I don't care what pedals you have. I don't care what boost or what compressors. Tone is in your hand. And everything, and I do mean everything, that has to do with your nervousness or being scared or unsure of a chord or fearful affects your tone. And I didn't learn this till later in the last year or so that when you're sure of what you're playing, your tone is not only personalized to you, but it's also the sweetest it'll ever be. That sometimes, I promise you, I go to my local guitar store and I pull a guitar off the wall and I don't plug it up to any pedals. I plug it straight to an amplifier. I put everything about Unity Gain and I play that guitar because I really want to hear the sound of that guitar and my hands and my fingers. That's important. If you can't play your guitar by itself with an amp, you need another guitar. You need a, a guitar that your tone is going to sing through that piece of wood. One day, you're going to realize you and that guitar have to become one. Now, one of my favorite guitarists of all time, Jubu Smith, John Jubu Smith, who I've known since I was a little boy. I've been around him since I was a little boy. I'm not saying we're the best of friends, but I've played at too many churches alongside of him. He could play any guitar out. He's just that good. But when it comes to me, I need a particular guitar. I need to have sat with that guitar for a day or so just so I can figure out where I want it. Okay? And so for the rest of us who are feel like novices at best, um, tone is going to be everything. And learning to develop your own sound and your own tone is going to be everything regarding that guitar. Okay, so what do you want the guitar to do? Do you want it to scream? Do you want it quiet and in the background? That's going to depict what type of pickups you have in that guitar. Okay, and tone is everything. When it relates to guitar, tone is everything, not pedals. Okay, not amps. Tone is everything. Man, well, I hope I didn't bore you much today about 20 minutes or so and I didn't want to take up all your Saturday again if you want to make sure that I'm giving constant and consistent content man send a donation that will keep me in front of this camera so that I could talk to you about what's really important to guitar players watch this in a few days in about a week I'm going to do a full review of my brand new, I hope you can handle this, PRS, PRS S22. It comes in the mail in just a few days. Whale blue with an F hole. I can't believe it. When I promise you, when we do this review of this PRS, I think we're going to have to go buy a couple more. All right? Cost about $2,500 or so. I can't wait till this gets to me. Anyway, if you have any more questions, you can always hit me at thechurchguitarist at gmail.com and you can send me all your questions. If you're looking for lessons, now is the time to get in to lock down that $99 rate from here to the end of 2021. If you sign up January 1st, 2021, the lessons are one. 39 a month. I'm not the best guitar player in the world. I'm not the best guitar teacher in the world, but I know my work. All right? So get in now while the getting is cheap so you can get all the lessons you want for 99 bucks a month, four lessons a month, four lessons a week. All right? So that's it. I'm done. We've talked about the five big things when it comes to what guitar you should buy. Do me a favor, go down to your local guitar shop, take some guitars off the wall and play them until you discover what neck you like, what configuration you like, what pickup configuration you like, 
what body style you like until you can find a guitar style that you can marry and become one with. So you can get that out of the way so you can get more chords in your hand and in your library. Again, I'm your boy, DL, a.k.a. The Church Guitars. Stay tuned for more constant, consistent content from The Church Guitars Club. I'll see you soon.